Okay, everybody, welcome to Python API requests using JSON. Uh, JSON in this case means JavaScript object notation. Quick shout out to my channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel directly. Click like, subscribe, and join if you can, everyone. So today, what we're going to be taking a look at is using uh, the request module and JSON module uh, to do web API requests. Now, an API is an application programming interface. And the website that we're going to be in, you know, interacting with is called tvmaze.com. Uh, and they have information about TV programs. Now, real quick, uh, JSON is something called, uh, I guess I mentioned earlier, JavaScript object notation. It is a way for information to be exchanged between programs. It is text-based, and uh, but it looks a lot, well, you'll see later. It is basically text-based but uh, it has a very specific format that is easy to use, especially in Python. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I am assuming that you have already seen my requests demo. Uh, if you don't know how the request module works, go watch that first and then come back here. So what I wanna do is I wanna connect to the TV Maze API. Now, there's a link here, I'll put it down below. It says tvmaze.com slash API, brings you to this page. And in this page, it talks about the various API calls that you can do. So it tells you here the root URL is right here. And here are some of the different types of API searches you can do. And there's some other information here as well. Now for just an average person, you don't really need to worry about, you know, all this crazy stuff over here. Let's just focus on the easy stuff over here. Now I've chosen to use the show single search as an example, just because it's the simplest one that I could figure out. Okay, so this is the URL. Now notice it's not a complete URL because you have to add the HTTP API.tvmaze.com part to it. But if I click this example, I'm gonna go ahead and open that in a new page. And what it does is it returns JSON. So I'm gonna take a look at, this is the raw data for that. You know, it's a little bit hard to see here. But if I click here, now this is something that uh, I guess Firefox does automatically. Um, so it gives you kind of an idea of what you're doing. Now, JSON is a lot like a dictionary in Python. You've got a key and some sort of value. So ID is 139, URL is this, the name is girls. This is the example they have and a really good show. I haven't seen it for a while, but it's a, it's a really good show. Get a chance to check it out. Anyway, um, so this is what the information I should say that we can get back from tvmaze.com about the show girls. And now instead of doing this in the browser, what we're going to do is we're going to do it over here in Python, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I'm going to go ahead and use my import uh, requests. Again, this is from my other tutorial. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I'm going to need the URL and I'm just going to go ahead and basically just copy that from here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the example. So I know the example works. Now I'm going to cut off the question uh, equals girls part. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit wider so we have a little bit more to refer to here. And the parameters, the params, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm using params. And so in the example that we, we got earlier was girls. Okay, so again, I'm just copying what is over here. And I put a capital G here, I don't think that matters. So what I wanna do is I wanna get a response for using the request module. So I'm gonna use requests.get and it's URL params. Okay. Now this response is not text, it is a response object. Again, I explained that in my request demo, check that out if you haven't. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if response dot status code equals 200. 200 means that everything went through perfectly. There's no problems. I'm gonna go ahead and print the response uh, dot text. Okay. And that should be our JSON code that, or I guess code uh, response that we saw over here. And this is a raw data. Okay, so it's not gonna be nicely formatted like this. It's gonna be raw data. So I should see that down below. I'm gonna do else. Uh, you know, print, you know, f, f string, uh, error, you know, and then I'm gonna put the status code in here. I hope we won't have that, but just in case, response.status code, in case I got the URL mixed up or something like that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. And you see there's a little bit of a delay. And now you can see here is the JSON code, or the JSON response. So ID 139, URL, blah, 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 which is pretty cool. Okay, so very easy, surprisingly easy, actually, if you think about it. So we were able to, just using a few lines of code, and I didn't even have to use this if stuff here, but let's see, one, two, three, four, basically five lines of code, uh, I was able to get that and print it out. Now, the thing you have to remember is that this is actually text. It's not a Python dictionary. It looks like it, but it's not a Python dictionary. It's text. So we have to be able to pull that information out of there. Now, the easiest way to do this that I know of uh, is to convert this text into a Python dictionary, which is surprisingly straightforward. To do that, I'm going to go import JSON, J-S-O-N. And this is a Python module that will let you manipulate JSON data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say the data equals JSON dot, uh, what is it, load S. Don't forget the S. Uh, load is a different command. See where it says loads str. So it takes this string, so response dot text, and it will convert that into a data. This data will become a dictionary. It returns a dictionary. So now I can go print data and see what we get here. Response is not defined because I spelled it wrong. Uh, response. Rip stone response. It's always embarrassing. But, you know, it's good to see everybody does this. So response. And you can see it looks very much the same because the format's very, very similar. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do import pprint, which is pretty print. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do pprint dot pprint data and run that again. And this gives us the data in a formatted, kind of easy to read method. So again, you can see some of the keys that we can use. So we got the name of the show was Girls. Um, it premiered on a certain time, had a rating. Uh, and there's just different things that we can do with this. Um, so let's go ahead and pull out the name. And let's say premiered. And we'll do the summary. So we've got three keys, name, premiered, and summary. So remember that. So I'm not going to pretty print that anymore. I'm just going to comment that out. So what I want to do, I said name equals premiered equals, and what was it summary equals. Now remember, this is a dictionary. And if you look closely, we got pretty lucky with this one. And I chose it because this one's pretty simple. Um, these are the keys, and they're like first level keys. They're not like embedded down further. Uh, now you see there are some dictionaries inside of dictionaries, which makes it a little bit more complicated, but I'm sticking to the simple stuff. So the name is going to give us this data. The premiere is going to give us this data. And the uh, summary is going to give us this data. So this is just like a normal Python dictionary. So data, and this is going to be name. I could use double quotes there. It doesn't really matter. Data and premiere. Just make sure you spell that correctly. And data uh, summary. Okay, and that's, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and print that out. So print uh, f, I'm gonna use f strings, they're very convenient. Uh, premiere on, and print uh, summary. Okay, so name, premiered on, premiered on. Okay, and again, this is a very, very common pattern, like encoding something, like especially something like this. First, we pull out, you know, we get the we get the data somehow from somewhere. In this case, it's a response object. From that response object, we pull out the text that we need. Then we converted it to the data format that we needed. And then we pulled out the individual pieces of data 
that we need. So the name, premiered, and summary. Now again, I didn't have to. This didn't have to be name. I could have called it show name or something like that. Um, this could have been NP or S. But again, I like to use you know names that make a lot of sense. So it's very easy to see what my program does. So now if I run this, you can see that. I pulled out the information, so the girls premiered on, and here's the date, and here is the summary. Now note, this summary happens to have uh, HTML tags in it, so I assume this is, I presume this was uh, meant for the web, but uh, anyway, that's that's a story for another day, how to filter that stuff out. Um, let's see, what else did I want to do? Okay, so I could change girls. I'm going to try a couple different shows just to see what's going on here. Let's try Star Trek, Okay, and you can see here. Uh, Star Trek premiered on, on June 24th, 1964. Wow, that was a long time ago. And you can see it talks about James Kirk, the Enterprise, etc., etc. And let's try Next Generation. Sorry, I'm a big Star Trek fan. Sorry, Star Wars people. Uh, let's see if that pops up. Oh, wow. Okay, so Star Trek The Next Generation prepared, premiered on, uh, was that, 9, whatever, 928, September 28th, 1987. And it's also going back, but not quite as far as the original. And yeah, so you can see that this TV Maze website has quite a few different, uh, quite a lot of information, I should say. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And let's see, what else? Let's try the Mentalist. Sorry, I'm a big Mentalist fan. Mentalist as well. Let's go ahead and run that. Oh, very cool. Okay, so that is Mentalist premiered on 2008. So 923, 2008. Very, very interesting. Um, great show if you haven't seen it. It's definitely on Netflix. So there you have it. Um, it's, pr it's surprisingly straightforward and easy to do this. Now again, I, you know, I, I prepared this ahead of time. I've done this before, so I already knew, you know, kind of how to pull the data out. Probably that's the hardest part about this is, you know, every website's going to return the data. Yeah, it's going to be JSON, but what are the keys going to be? How are they going to be nested and, and all that sort of thing? Um, so you have to kind of you know play around with pulling the data out, uh, but again for this one it's pretty straightforward. It only returns one possibility, and that, again that is why I chose it. Now there are other you know open APIs they're called, and you can just access them without making any sort of you know account. Um, this is a nice one for getting started. I would strongly recommend that you not put this in a how can I put it? That you not put this in a loop because if you mess it up and you make too many requests, you can get blocked. Uh, what I might want to do with this program, just to make it fun, I might say show equals input, you know, please input a show name, oops, quote, and then in here I would put, you know, show, so that way I don't have to, I'm not hard coding. When I run the program, it's going to ask me for a particular show, and I'm going to say billions because I'm watching that right now, and you can see here. Billions premiered on January 17, 2016. Uh, is a complex drama. It is absolutely a complex drama, but it's really good. Check that out if you have a chance. Um, anyway, so that is that. Um, that is how you basically pull data out of an API uh, on a web page. That provides it. Not all web pages provide this, of course. And yeah, that's it. You pull it out, uh, take the text, convert it to a dictionary using the JSON module. And then you pull the individual pieces of data out that you need just using standard diction, you know, Python dictionary notation. And then you output the data as it's needed. I'll put all this stuff down below so you can copy it out and try it yourself. So, uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, click like, subscribe, join, whatever you can do. And as I like to say, keep on coding. Take care.